So good evening. This is uh, part two on the uh, uh, current information to clear up a lot of disinformation about Libya. So here we get to um, the uh, this, uh, Libya public opinion sample, which I showed at the beginning of the last presentation, which shows there's clear opposition to the Libya intervention in all quarters. Uh, all countries uh, uh, oppose more than they favor the Libya intervention, which should give you an idea of what internal Libyan sympathies are as well, because there's that big a trend line. Um, so at any rate, now we get to our conclusions. So um, I'm going to take the stage here for a moment as best as I can and uh, talk about conclusions. <clears throat> so the conclusion is that the story of Libya is a story in which the West and Qatar armed the Libyan Islamic fighting group, one of whose key members was the much touted number two kill in Pakistan recently, Alibi, the Libyan. We kill Al Qaeda in Pakistan and allow them to spread through Africa and Syria. Then we can embrace those African leaders threatened by Al Qaeda of the Maghreb or to topple them because they're destabilized already. This is a story that does not need to even pick up the issue of whether LIFG has legitimacy until the Western leaders publicly explain why they are fueling Islamist insurgencies in enemy states and killing them in client states, treating them as pawns, treating Al-Qaeda as a pawn, manufacturing constant recruits through killing family members all over the Arab world, and if any of the stereotypes about Arabs are correct, killing hundreds of young fighting age men all over the world for becoming sympathetic to militant causes is a good way to keep the people in the military justified and the national security state justified. And I happen to have been studying the Department of Homeland Security as the lowest morale of almost any other department in the government other than the um, Securities and Exchange Commission. And um, the Homeland Security you can just lard out money. I saw, uh, when I was looking into government uh, internet uh, stimulus, the people who had uh, easy money without many questions asked compared to the other programs was the DHS, from what I heard. <clears throat> Gaddafi had already surrendered his weapons of mass destruction. You know, back in 2003, he eliminated his chemical and nuclear stocks, and he paid billions in compensation for Lockerbie. Commercial ties were expanding. The economy was growing 10% from only... I only have one source on that economic growth. I usually like to have double-sourced. Everything I state should be double-sourced. I'm not telling you how to put these facts together. I leave you to do that. I am not exactly certain myself. Was it poor scholarship and warning not to underestimate Gaddafi's support levels, that is, were our leaders disinformed, given shoddy information, or for the potential for blowback, because this is leading to a hardening of a, a Russia-China entente to um, combat uh, American influence, because America has no influence in actual landlocked Asia other than Afghanistan, so Iran and Syria are both uh, threats to them of America consolidating uh, a foothold into Asia through Southwest Asia, which reminds me of almost 1984 warring across these uh, 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 sort of third world belts of instability. The E7 are noticing, which is Brazil, Russia, India, China combined with Indonesia, Mexico, Turkey, that this term is being applied to them. They're becoming self-aware and they will probably collaborate closely. Was it Obama administration hawkishness and craving a cheap and easy victory by plunging a dagger into the backside of a dying Gaddafi? Rich plunder for no fighting. Libya has eight trillion dollars in assets, six to ten, and a lot of it in oil, gold, and an ice age. Uh, ocean of fresh water under the desert, which might be more valuable than the oil eventually. Was it ignorance, or as Dennis Kucinich said, international gangsterism, or was it, and was it worth it? Will what follows justify the savage means of obtaining it? Normally, 
the end and the means do not justify the end does not justify the means. So who benefits from all the chaos that this uh, conflict uh, ushered in? What evidence do we have about the motivations? Libya was one of seven countries selected for attack by the U.S. after 9/11, according to General Wesley Clark. Gaddafi had insulted and infuriated Sarkozy and the Arab League. And look up Gaddafi's uh, ten insults to the world. There's a good video of that, which I have on my site as well. The um, SF Free Radio, Olivia Research, Alexandru site. A Gaddafiist Libya could have exploited and influenced Tunisian and Egyptian revolutions adversely to U.S. interests. So Egypt is on the east side of Libya and uh, uh, Tunisia is on the west side. So it lies between two countries that were going through the Arab Spring, the main two. Um, and that is a major issue. This could have been the thinking that it would adverse, uh, be adverse to U.S. interests to have a country that's sort of a magnet of a socialism anchored between two countries going through a rebellion. So instead, we uh, incited the Islamists there, armed the Islamists. This could have been the thinking that we needed to overthrow Gaddafi with any means necessary once we had the uprising. Uh, in uh, in force, and the U.S. has been looking for a base in Africa and been up till now basically unable to get one for their Africom to combat Chinese access to raw materials. Africa is not in the U.S. sphere of influence at this time. Not technically in terms of military assistance. In the current crisis, the Islamist Salafist Syrianicans wanted Gaddafi gone, but many, even the, in Benghazi, now wonder what they have traded it for. Libya was a peaceful country. You could drive around freely. Now each city has its own militia. Could you imagine traveling in a highly ethnically charged atmosphere like that? The Obama administration, if it looks strong on defense, could manipulate the voters on the right. To vote for him? Is that the issue? A cheap victory in Libya would bring him into a strong position in the election? Couldn't, could we, couldn't we salve our consciences, lying to ourselves, how we saved tens of thousands of lives as Susan Rice and Hillary Clinton came? Claimed, I'm certain that the uh, intervention into Benghazi would have, if had we not done it, would have been a few hundred lives, and we could have done that and no more. So we have uh, definitely increased the level of violence in Libya substantially over having not intervened. It's in a way, you know, Hillary Clinton and Susan Rice said, Gaddafi, stop killing your own people, but because killing people is a NATO monopoly uh, in the conjunction with their allies, Al-Qaeda, apparently, in Libya at any rate. What will happen to all the rich and powerful in our arms industry and in surveillance and any terrorism uh, uh, if we do not fuel these conflicts. Do you know how much money has been larded out in inefficient contracts of largely zero utility? That's when I referred to the Department of Homeland Security. If we don't keep an enemy out there to fight, we recruit for Al-Qaeda by killing people all over the world by the bushel. What is going on in Libya today? Does it portend a brighter future for Libya? Will being forcibly converted into an Iraq-like state eventually help the people? To decide that, you have to know the real past of Libya. And it was quite different from the stereotypical view given by Western media that virtually never had been to Libya, though travel in and out of Libya was increasing. For those who did not have a way to control their own affairs or have a voice in Gaddafi's Libya, for whom a chance at political expression would make years of degraded living condition and violence, hundreds of times greater than prior to the NATO-sponsored overthrow of the Libyan Jamaheria created by Gaddafi. For those people, this is definitely worth it. For Gaddafi supporters, it's been a horrendous nightmare, and they may exceed the number supporting NATO regime change. It certainly appears that the majority would have preferred to do it without American, French, Danish, and British bombers and fighters bombing from above. Let us suppose Gaddafi sympathizers consist of a quarter to a half of the Libyan population. That means one to two million people have been severely disenfranchised out of six million. One to three million people. These people are not allowed to participate in politics. They're not allowed to have freedom of speech. If they uh, are detected as being sympathetic, they can be jailed. 
without, uh, uh, I don't know without trial or not. I mean, we have such ridiculous laws here now. This almost seems like something that is non-surprising because we ourselves are doing this to ourselves in some ways. Mass imprisonment without trial with widespread multiply corroborated accounts that either the majority of the thousands of prisoners have, uh, are being tortured or certainly thousands. If one was to sympathize with these people for a moment, you would see the irony of the Libya Islamic Fighting Group armed in violation of UN 1973 to overthrow the Libyan Jamahiriya, that the West would be anxious for their enemies to put them on trial. The potential for show trials a la Stalinism would be huge. We shall see. There's widespread lawlessness, terrorism, and still pockets of resistance from the loyalists and affiliated tribes all over the country. The tribes opposed to the winners already know they must advocate as a tribe and not as loyalists. Uh, if you were a militia and you attack another militia and it's tribal, you won't get intervention from other militias. But if it's suspected you're loyalists, the Al-Qaeda, the Libya Islamic Fighting Group, and that sort of people will descend on you quickly and evaporate you. Uh, that is my speculation. Some would say this sort of oppression of the vanquished is common, such as in Nazi Germany. But Libya was not an aggressor state. And the overthrow took so much aid from the West that it frankly has a tenuous claim on legitimacy. <clears throat> and by permitting Gaddafi's supporters, they ensure we will never know if they have a mandate. And in any case, they may not, by simple logic. In other words, if you refuse, if you're afraid of letting other people run against you and you create elections that only allows people you approve to run, does that not mean that you are afraid that you don't even have the legitimacy to win the election? And we will never know if they had a mandate if they do this, because they can continue to consolidate control and influence and eventually erase the memory of the Jamahedia, just as in Orwell, he who controls the past controls the future. And he who controls the present controls the past. Uh, they have NATO and the Gulf ready to supply them with limitless firepower. What do they have to uh, fear? Yet they fear a loyalist even making this weak of a mouse. You should hear the Churchill speech about the peep of a mouse. Uh, how, uh, you know, dictators can't stand to hear even a word said against them because their whole uh, mirage collapses. And I'm not... Uh, I'm trying to allow you to draw the conclusions, but I want you to think about these factors and look at these issues. Then there is the tragic case of Saif al-Islam al-Gaddafi. Um, in the case of Saif al-Islam, two of his brothers were gruesomely murdered, one of them killed in cold blood, the other bombed by NATO, and uh, one executed after capture. A niece and nephew were murdered by the bombing by NATO. His father was... Um, basically sodomized with a bayonet to death. Uh, his own fingers, Saif al-Islam's, are blown off by a drone. He's been abused in prison. He signaled to the few people who have met with him and pointed to a chip tooth and so forth. We don't know to what degree, but he has been abused in prison. A reformist, he was the main reformist in that circle. Um, other than, per, and then of course there was uh, uh, Musa Ibrahim. Um, uh, he was a reformist who freed the very people who killed his father. He created a rapprochement with the Libya Independent uh, Islamic Fighting Group and released many of them from prison, most of them, I think virtually all of them, ironically. And perhaps that's why he's alive, because um, although they want him uh, jailed, maybe they don't want to kill him because he released them originally. I don't know. These people now seek to lay their hands on safe, and I'm sure many of them would be tempted uh, to murder him, to silence their own consciences about the unlawful and violent way they collaborated with uh, traditionally foreign colonial enemies to overthrow their peaceful government and create a state uh, rife with civil war, terror, militias, torture camps, uh, freedom of speech banned, huge, uh, the finance minister resigned because of the corruption, huge amounts of money larded out to American, Qatari, and European uh, contractors to essentially quid pro quo pay them back for having bombed uh, the Libyan government out of existence. I call upon all viewers to register their opposition to allowing Saif al-Islam Gaddafi to stay in this extremely situation, extremely dangerous situation. We should have 
Although I don't want to target on celebrities, we should have sympathy for this man. He freed these people who tried to reform his country, and hes uh, it's absurd for the perpetrators of all this murder to be allowed to lay their hands on him to create a show trial. Um, and please, I would like everyone to send uh, letters to the International Criminal Court, uh, uh, collaborate with people that are trying to file suit against NATO for their action at, uh, at The Hague, because NATO's uh, headquartered there and they are signatories to the ICC. So if these people managed to kill Saif al-Islam, uh, they would be able to sleep a bit more soundly with all of the blood of their, on their hands. Now, again, this is speculation. I'm not saying that the new Libya won't turn out nicely. I do believe that the West was utterly hypocritical to, to kill the number two guy uh, from the Libyan opposition in Pakistan and not even clearly make the linkage. My name is Alexander Hagen. Good night and good luck.